the last example using this. So I'm only going to do one example because you're basically doing two problems at once and finding two volumes. Oh no. All right. So we want the region bounded by y equals x squared. Y equals 2x revolved about the y axis. And of course, we're finding volume. So, do your best, sketch the region. We're going about the y axis, so get the best three dimensional picture you can draw, and then a cross section. You should be graphing right now. These are pretty common functions. You definitely know what the graphs look like. So questions on region, sort of like an apple slice. So now we're ready to revolve about y-axis. So we're going to rotate here. Oh no. All about y-axis. Looks like a pistachio. So, cross section. How do I cut this? Do I cut horizontal or do I cut vertical? Where are my slices? How do I get slices? What did I always say about rotations? Perpendicular to the axis. Basically, you want circles. So I need to cut, in this case, I'm making horizontal cuts like this. So there is a cross section right there. That will correspond to, I'm gonna have to very carefully cut this. Oh, that's a pretty good looking cross section. All right. So what does this cross section look like? Mmm, donuts. It's called annulus in math. It's basically the area between two circles. So you got a big circle, a little circle, this area between them. All right. We could either go for uh, the big volume and then subtract the small volume. If you look, what is the shape of the interior, this removed interior? It's a cone. So I could not use calculus to get the interior volume if I want to. I think it's one third pi r h if I want to do cone volume. Uh, so we're basically going to need big R of x squared minus little r, uh-oh. I made a mistake. 
Is this an X integral or a Y integral? Y. I have to change my Y values. So here is how you can see that it's a Y integral. So one way to see is you have to change the Y values in order to get this cross section to go across the entire shape. So if you think about squeegeeing a window, you got to move the squeegee up and down if it's going to be horizontal. You're not going to squeegee very much if you try to squeegee your car window and move it sideways. You're going to be there for a very long time before you get it clean. So think if you want to squeegee this shape, you have to go either top to bottom, bottom to top. That's how you're going to squeegee this shape right here using this as your squeegee. So that's another way to think about this is a dy integral. So any questions on that idea? You just want to think, what does it take to cover your whole, your whole area here? You have to change the y value. And then this will uh, cover the entire area. So I shouldn't have written of x of x. These are of y of y. And here we'll label the radii. Here's the little one right here. That's little r. Now big r, unfortunately, will look like it's right on top of little r. So there's little r. I'll draw big r sort of below right here. There's big r, big radius. So we got little r, we got big r. These should be functions of y. So I want to think of, in this case, big x minus little x. <coughs> so big r of y. Big X minus small x. Okay. If we come back to our original drawing right here, I'm going to use a different color. I don't want to keep going with black everywhere because it looks a little bit, there's too much going on. So I'm going to use blue. There's little r right there. And here, is big R. And I think that should make more sense with little r and big R. Any questions on those two radii? It's very important that you see where they are. So we got the sort of hollow one, little r, the interior radius, and then big R is the exterior radius. So everybody's okay with that? So let's go ahead and calculate those. The good news is, no matter which R you're working with, the left point is the same. The left X value is the same. What is the left X value? Zero. So left X value, the small one in this case, is going to be the same. So our small X is both uh, zero. So no matter what, small X equals zero. Big X, different story. I have two equations, y equals 2x and y equals x squared. I need to have x as a function of y. Right now they're solved y as a function of x. I need to rewrite them x as a function of y. So I need to solve for x in these two equations here. Algebraically it's easy to do. y equals x squared. So x equals plus or minus square root y. And the other one, y equals 2x x equals one half y. Now I have to make a choice. Do I want to go plus or minus on this square root? And why should I go plus or minus? So think about that. I need to make a choice here. So how do I choose So I'm going to choose positive. Why is x positive square root of y in my picture? Not necessarily because it's above the x-axis, because my x values are positive to the right of the y-axis. So all my x values are positive. So that's why x is positive square root y. If I was over on the left side, I would have used negative square root y. So I went positive square root y. So this is our 
that square root is the big x value. So big X is going to be square root Y. Uh, so we're going to take that over to our radius somewhere here. So big X is square root Y, we said. Square root Y minus small x was 0. And this is big R of Y. And little r of y is similar. It's going to be big X minus small x, but this time big X is 1 half y, small is 0. So our volume is going to be the integral pi a to B, big R of Y squared minus little r of Y squared. I'm going to skip the writing the of Y of Y part because it's always going to be big radius minus small radius. So I know it's of Y because I have a dy integral just looking at my region. So just putting in the two big R is squared is going to be Y minus little r squared is one half Y squared dy. What about starting and ending values? Should I be choosing X values or Y values for my A and B? Y. So dy integral, basically everything is in Y's. So I go 0 to 4. These functions are super nice. I didn't have to spend much time intersecting them. I don't think we can use symmetry here. The shape is not, uh, there's no vertical symmetry. Like the bottom volume is not going to equal the top volume in a nice way. So I can't really split this uh, and go like 0 to 2 and then double that because that's not going to be the full volume. So just square it out and you have your integral right here y minus y squared over 4 and anti-power rule and you're done. So no questions on center removed before we move on. Now we're into 6.2 This is volume using cylindrical shells. So we're going to rotate uh, just like we did before, except we're going to break things down in a very different way. So what we just did is basically the disk method which is 6.3, no, we just did it. Yeah, so we just finished the disk method. So this is called the shell method. <coughs> so these are gonna be uh, rotated the same same way, except we're going to break things down differently. So before we sliced up and everything was either a circle or a circle with the center removed. <laughs> so that was called uh, the disk method, which uh, you can go back and write in your notes. Let's go do that real fast. It's probably a good place to write it. This volume formula we used right here. I put a box around it. So disk, it's called the disk method. So every cross section here is going to look 
like a annulus. You could also say it looks like a CD. I don't know if people use records anymore. Records, CDs, probably don't use CDs anymore. I don't know. Donut that's been run over by a car. That works too. All right, so this is called the disk method. So now we're going to go into shell method. So we're going to get a really similar region or a really similar volume when we rotate. So our first, we'll just sketch out a region. We'll just do something easy like this. For our first example, we're going to rotate about the Y axis like that. And so before we did perpendicular to our axis of rotation. What we're going to do now for shells is go parallel to the axis of rotation. So our cross sections are going to be lined up parallel to the axis of rotation. So I could redraw or draw the three-dimensional version of this. So the actual rotated version is going to look like two, sort of like a cursive M, and you have to signify that we're rotating like that. That's one of those cakes. I forget what it's called. I don't know, delicious Thanksgiving food. So it looks like this. And what about our cross section? What does our cross section turn into? So what do I get when I rotate this around? It's going to trace out. And look like this. So what shape does that trace out? You can look up a few, like a foot on the board and answer that. Almost a circle. Cylinder. So we're rotating a vertical piece around. So it's going to turn into a cylinder. So our section is now so our cross section rotates, making a cylinder. So we'll sketch that out. It's very easy to sketch a cylinder. How do I get the surface area of this cylinder? I'm going to need a few measurements. So everybody took geometry. All right, need the height. What other measurement do I need? Radius. Radius. So this is a hollow cylinder. It's not filled in. This is just one cross section that got spun around. So this is a hollow cylinder. How do I get the surface area? I'm going to take the circumference of the base and multiply by the height. How does that work? Just think if you, if this is a label on a can, you cut it off, measure how much it take to go around the can, and then how tall is it? And that's the area of your label. So we're going to do height times circumference. So a, in this case, a of x is going to be height times, I probably wrote that in the wrong order. Let's go circumference times height. So 
So 2 pi r times h. This is our area of one section. So if we want volume, what we're going to do is integrate pretty much same as before, ax dx. And you're going to go from wherever you're small to your big x values, a to b, ax dx. Except now our area is 2 pi r h. So it's integral a to b. I'm going to put 2 pi outside r of x, h of x dx. So that's volume right there. That was rotated about the y-axis. If you want x-axis, it's super similar. 2 pi integral a to b, except now everything is a function of y. r of y, h of y, dy. And this is rotated about x-axis. Let's do our first problem. So our region is going to be bounded by y equals 3x minus x squared in quadrant 1. About the line x equals negative 1. Find the volume. So sketch your region. Happy or sad parabola? Sad. I just factored it for you so you can see the x-intercepts very easily. So graph your parabola. You could find the vertex, negative b over 2a. It's in a weird order. Negative x squared plus 3x plus 0. That's ax squared plus bx plus c form. So you can get your vertex. rotating about x equals negative 1. So it's a vertical line, not quite the y-axis, but close. So is this, when I rotate this volume, are we going to have a s solid interior or empty? Empty. So good news, the shell method doesn't care. So why does the shell method not care? Because the shell method, if you think about what cross-sections look like, we're going parallel now to our axis of rotation. So here's a cross section. The way shells work, I won't actually count any of this area over here to the left because shells get smaller and smaller and smaller and don't include any of this area right in here. We're going to stop at zero. We're not going to go to negative one. 
Does that make sense there? We're going to stop at zero, so we're not going to do any of this area that I just uh, sort of scribbled on. So the shells, shell interior, you don't have to worry about it. So let's revolve our cross section here. section we have a height and we have a radius so first of all is this a dx or a dy integral how do I squeegee my windshield do I change x coordinates or y coordinates I gotta change my x coordinates this is gonna be a dx integral the way it's set up So we are using the dx version up here for volume. So our volume is the dx version. So I need r of x and h of x. Let's do r of x first. So it's going to be big y minus small y. All right, what is the big y value? So it's going to be that 3x minus x squared. That's the top y value there. That curve is going to always change. It's not constant. So that's big y value. 3x minus x squared. So any questions on that idea? Big y is the curve on the top that's going to change, so not constant. So it's 3x minus x squared. What about small y? Oh, what am I doing? This is a radius. I was thinking of the height. <coughs> yes, I was thinking about the height right there. I was looking at y values here. So I was thinking about the height. So we'll just keep going with the height. So the height, the highest y value is right here, which is 3x minus x squared. That's the curve that we graphed. What about the smallest y value? Zero. So height, bottom height zero, top height is that curve there. That's h of x. What about r of x radius? It's going to be big. Now you don't really want to think about big Y minus small y. These aren't really Y coordinates because you want to think the radius is measured from the axis you rotate over to uh, wherever you drew your cross section. So this is a little bit weird. What is the big X value? It's a little hard to see. Whatever x you're using, that's your big x value. So in this case, your big x value is just x. So whatever number you're, you're on right there between 0 and 3, that is your big part of your radius. So that one takes a little getting used to. What about small x value? Not quite 0. Not quite negative x. Negative 1. So our radius is x plus 1. So our volume 2 pi integral r h dx 2 pi from a to b 2 pi integral r is x plus 1, h is 3x minus x squared dx, and a and b are a and b x or y values. They're going to be x's. We're doing dx integral. So my small is not negative 1. I actually start at 0. 
I'm not going over to negative 1, I'm starting over at 0. And 0 to 3. Not necessarily a fun integral, but pretty easy to do. How do I integrate this? Unfact, I get a FOIL, distribute, multiply, lots of words, uh, and then you just have a polynomial. So add one to the power, divide by the new power. You're going to have fractions, but not difficult integral to do. So one thing you'll notice, you can solve these problems in one of two ways. You do not have to go shells necessarily. You could go disks. You could, instead of going disks, you can go shells. So it's up to you which way you want to solve the problem. I just want to warn you, some problems are easier to set up one way than they are the other. And some problems are impossible to solve in one of the two configurations. So if you set up a shells problem and the integral is crazy and you're pretty sure you did it right, you may want to switch to the disk method instead. If you set up a disk method and your integral looks crazy, you can switch over and do shells instead. But you should get the same thing either way, the same uh, volume. If you have an interior removed, generally it'll be easier to go shell method. Not always the case, but generally the shells will be a little easier on in removed interior. So our next example, and I'm telling you this because when you do your 6-1 homework and 6-2 homeworks, you don't necessarily have to do all disk method for 6-1 and all shell for 6-2. But I strongly recommend you do some disks, some shells, so you can do uh, either setup. When I assign points for these problems, I will give a vast majority of the points for the setup of the integral and only a small amount for solving the integral. So you'll get something like three quarters of the points for setting it up correctly, drawing cross sections, um, you know, getting the radius, height, big radius, small radius, whatever pieces you need, that's worth almost the entire uh, points for the problem. Can you set it up correctly? So we're gonna go region bounded by y equals square root x y equals 0, x equals 4, rotated about our y-axis. So sketch out your region, rotate it about the y-axis. We are going to use shells here in the shells section, so you have to set up with shells. So set up this as best you can. So I label all the curves on the edge. So we got y equals 0, x equals 4, y equals square root x. Cross sections. I'm doing shells. Do I go vertical or do I go horizontal? How do I squeegee the window? So if I do horizontal, 
I will have, I'll be going disk method. So if I go perpendicular, it will spin out to a disk. So I want to go parallel, will give me shells. So if I go shells, I need to go parallel to the rotation right there. So now I'll spin into cylinders. So draw what this spins into. I recommend you draw it out, just sort of extend your axis, and then you can draw a really nice version of it. Things will be lined up pretty nicely, like that. That might help out drawing a little bit. So just use your rotation axis and just draw it down below. The nice thing is your radius is really easy to see in this version. So your radius will be this distance right here. So that's R and that's H. So is this a DX or a DY? Squeegee your window. Do you need to use change your X's or Y's? You need to change your X. Or you're going to be there with a dirty windshield. So we need to go change X values. So another thing to note, if I went with a disk method, I would be setting up a dy integral. So whatever cylinder, if you go cylinders, you're going to be one variable. And if you go shells, you'd be doing the with the other variable. So keep that in mind. So we have a dx integral, so we need h of x, r of x. <coughs> so we'll do, we'll actually do radius first this time. So radius big minus small and h of x will be again big minus small h of x the height is going to be some y values subtracted and radius is going to be an x measurement so it's really going to be big x minus small x so radius measures basically x values right here and height measures y values we both we need both functions to be functions of x though so do your best to figure out radius big and small. The small I think would be way easier. The small radius is super easy. Once you finish your radius, get your height. Must be brave and share big X. <coughs> nope. X. It's the sneaky one that's not obvious. So wherever X value you're thinking of, that happens to be the big X value. So here's that weird one, just X. Small in this case, we took the Y axis, so y equals uh, or x equals zero right there. If I would have chosen, you know, x is negative five, it would have been negative five way over uh, there on the left. So it's whatever your uh, smallest x value will be. My small x. All right. What about height? So here, if I measure on this, h of x. All right. Which one is changing, big y or small y? Big Y, top's changing, bottom's the same. So what is big Y? Squared X, it's that curve right there. Y equals squared X. What about small Y? It's always zero right there. So we just got squared X for height, radius just X. And we're ready to write out the full integral, 2 pi outside, a to b, r, h, d, x, 2 pi r is x, square root x, dx, from now a to b, they're 
x values, so we go, you can see on your original uh, graph, 0 to 4. You're going across 0 to 4. x values. All right, super easy integral. I can't really do it in this form, though. What do I have to do to integrate this? Yeah, it's actually the three halves power. Add one to the power, five halves, divide by five halves. Don't forget your algebra skills. I will try to not put uh, questions that, if done correctly, will lead to horrible integrals. If you do have a horrible integral, double check before you spend eight minutes on a super difficult integral. Because most points are going to be assigned uh, for the setup. So, last problem, we're going to do the same region, but we're going to rotate about the, let's see, how about y equals 5. Fast resketch. So this will have a very hollow interior, but we're going with the shell method, so we don't really care. Shell method will take care of the hollow interior. So cross section, do I want horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. So that will spin up into a cylinder. It's going to be a sideways cylinder, like paper towel roll, something like that. So I want a sideways cylinder, or a sideways cross section that will rotate into a cylinder. So I'll just extend over here. Oh no. So there's my cylinder right there. Now height and radius. <coughs> they are, we have a dy integral, so I need of y of y. It's a little weird, the height is measured sideways now. But just remember your cylinder is tipped over sideways, so that makes sense. Height's gonna be the horizontal measurement and radius will be the vertical measurement. So coming back to our original, h of y will be this horizontal measurement. The radius is going to go up here, r of y. This lining up, just extending your rotation axis is nice because it lets you see your r of y super easy. It makes the r of y match up nicely. Uh, between the two. Can you see me move the cursor around the screen? Maybe too much to point at the screen and keep spinning around. So this, you can see your radius lined up perfectly. Okay, so write down formula for, go with the radius first and the height second. So R of Y, H of Y. So the radius is a vertical measurement here, so it's going to be big, big y minus small y. The height is x's this time, so it's going to be big x minus small x.
Are you stuck on small y? No? Alright. What's big y? Alright, big y is always 5. We're doing the radius right now. What about small y? Small y is y. So whatever y value you're on, that's small y. All right, big X minus small X. What is big X? Four. Big X not going to change. It's over there on the right side. It's always four, 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 four. No matter what cross section I use, always four. Small X, different story. Small X is on a curve right there. So we had Y equals squared X. What is wrong with this? This would be y. So I need a function of y, not a function of x. So I need to have a function of y. So this could be written y squared equals x. So instead of y equals square root x, so we're going to take that out. I'm going to relabel this as x equals y squared. So instead of squared x, I need y squared right there. So volume 2 pi a b r h d y. We have 2 pi r is 5 minus y, h, 4 minus y squared, dy, and we're going a to b. What numbers do I use for a and b? Do I go 0 to 4 or 0 to 2? 0 to 2. It's a dy integral, so I need y values. So 0, y is 0, to y is 2. So again, fill this out polynomial and add one of the powers and you'll be able to integrate. All right, that's the end of 6.2.